Typhoon Iwinia pushing up northeastwards towards Japan on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for May 28th. Cyclone Ramal is weakening and is a weak tropical depression well inland at this point in Bangladesh and India. And Typhoon Awinia is moving northeastwards towards Japan. It's now cleared the Philippines, but it's leaving behind a trail of other areas of rainfall for the region. But first of all, the Atlantic. It's four days until hurricane season begins and we have no areas of interest yet. Um, we have still a few storms across the US today, especially in Texas, and a line of moisture uh, moving through uh, Jamaica and Haiti. In the eastern Pacific, it's day 14 of hurricane season, and we have one or two little areas of uh, disturbed weather uh, in the intertropical convergence zone. But apart from that, really nothing to talk about at all in the basin, and nothing expected to form in the next seven days. The West Pack has Typhoon Awinia moving northeastwards, still a Category 1 at this point, after it peaked yesterday early as a Category 2. Uh, one or two other uh, disturbances could form later on in the week in the Western Pacific. And then moving on to the uh, North Indian Ocean, of course, it's uh, what's left of Rimal, which is now a tropical depression. Estimated winds of only about 25 miles per hour, but it is still dumping large amounts of rainfall over the northern reaches of Bangladesh and in the easternmost parts of India. And in the southwest Indian Ocean, we're now giving a 20% chance to an area of interest that could develop in the next seven days, maybe more towards next week than this week. Uh, but there it is right now. Is it going to be yet another uh, crazy storm down there near the equator late into the season? Well, let's take a look at Typhoon Awinyar. It's currently 497 kilometers from Miyakojima, Japan, 577 from the Batanes Islands of the Philippines, 600 from Okinawa, 677 from the Daitojima, and that is expected to get tropical storm force winds at least from this storm, and 1240 from Kagoshima on one of the main islands, Kyushu, in Japan. Moving northeastwards and should be accelerating pretty soon if it isn't doing so already and it should reach Diotojima in about 36 hours or less. Let's check satellite imagery then. First of all, looking at a wide view of Cyclone at Rimal. Uh, it's still uh, got quite a lot of cloud cover. Western side of it is much more clearer now than the eastern side, which is pushing up all that moisture and the clouds towards the east there and precipitation. Uh, so very shortly, if it's still got a circulation, it will get exposed. I think it still might have a circulation in there, which is why we're still calling it a tropical depression at this time. And this is uh, Typhoon Iwinyar there, which which is still blowing up large amounts of cloud uh, convective cloud tops uh, but still the eye hasn't really recovered since it fell apart earlier on uh, just over a day ago there's some infrared views and you can see how the storm has been pushing up northeastwards and has been blowing up a new burst of convection on the eastern side of the eye Here's some more views of Remal. You might be able to see its circulation rotation better on this particular view on the Force 13 website. You can check out this imagery live on there, force13.com slash satellite. And this is water vapor imagery. Uh, so it certainly looks like that's the uh, circulation right there, certainly at the mid levels. Lower level might be a little bit displaced towards the southwest. Uh, but this storm is pretty much done. Uh, we're just watching to see uh, how long it will last inland. It will be dumping a lot of rainfall over this entire area. And this is one again, once again, is a winyar. Its movement has been a little bit here and there. It was moving due north at one point when it was passing east of Luzon. Uh, now it looks like the slight north component again, but the general movement overall is northeasterly, and it looks like it is dealing with quite a bit of wind shear on the northwestern side. So uh, it's been almost exposed at times, uh, but it is still going strong, and I would say that it's probably about 80 miles per hour winds right now, and an estimated pressure we've got for it is 978. There's a precipitation viewer as well, satellite indicated precipitation, uh, very high amounts in the southeastern side of the eye wall. 
Well, this is the Atlantic right now. A few storms bubbling up off the coast of the Carolinas is the main real story there on the east coast of the US. And this is down into the Caribbean. There's a little area that's starting to blow up uh, convection uh, north of Panama and northeast of Costa Rica. There could be a system forming there later on next week. And this is the eastern Atlantic off the coast of Africa. Uh, a little disturbance there, not much to talk about. Eastern Pacific as well, we've already looked at really uh, nothing much to say. One or two little disturbances off the coast of uh, Costa Rica on the Pacific side as well. And that is uh, Uwinyar, not particularly large as you can see there. It's been quite small its whole time. And this is the Bay of Bengal once again. What's left of Ramal uh, starting to fade into obscurity uh, compared to what it was like earlier. Well, sea surface temperatures look like this, extremely warm still in the eastern Pacific, south of uh, Mexico, eastern Mexico, uh, temperatures up to 32 degrees, maybe a little bit more in one or two spots. Gulf of California is starting to look good as well. The Gulf of Mexico is completely covered up with 26 degrees Celsius waters now, and that extends up the US East Coast as far as Savannah, Georgia. We've got warmer waters in the Gulf Stream, of course, um, and extremely warm waters now around the Keys and down near the Bahamas and around Cuba. West Pacific looks like this, uh, the South China Sea looking very warm, temperatures up to 32 degrees Celsius, Philippine Sea also looking very good even after Uinia, and this is the North Indian Ocean now. Uh, recovering quite quickly actually after Cyclone Rimal. It was very large storm so it reduced temperatures over a large area uh, but temperatures still hugging close to 32 degrees Celsius looking really good for that area. Southwest Indian Ocean uh, still got some energy left there in those northern reaches uh, for that potential 20% cyclone uh, 30 degrees Celsius in one or two spots and off Australia temperatures decreasing uh, gradually there. Um, it's coasting away around 28 degrees Celsius in a few spots off the coast of Western and Northern Australia. South Pacific, those temperatures continuing to decrease slowly as well. New Caledonia running up to about 25 degrees Celsius now. So compared to average, what does it look like? Well, the Atlantic, as we know, is soaring above average over quite a few areas there, three or four degrees above normal. And in the Eastern Pacific, a few spots there as well, but generally cool in the higher latitudes. Western Pacific looking good, especially in the South China Sea, where Iriniar is tracking. It's gonna be an area of high uh, temperatures compared to normal as well. Uh, Bay of Bengal has certainly taken a chunk out of those warm SSTs there, that this recent storm, uh, but still generally above average. Eastern Pacific oceanic heat content is continuing to increase and even out a little bit there. Western Pacific is bouncing back off the coast of the Philippines after Typhoon Winia quite quickly. Uh, still got very high amounts of energy there and so I expect we'll see quite a bit of activity later on. In the Atlantic, the hot spot, real hot spot though, is increasing off the coast of uh, Jamaica and also extending up towards the Western Caribbean coast and up to the Gulf of Mexico. Down to the Southwest Caribbean as well, uh, high values there increasing too. So let's check the computer models. This is the GFS for the next five days. We're watching Typhoon Uwinyar move up towards the northeast there. It does gradually weaken. It passes Diotojima, probably still as a category one, but then it weakens to a tropical storm before making its closest pass to the Tokyo region. And they could still get tropical storm force winds, however. Watch this again as it runs up to those populated locations and just about uh, getting the sting there of tropical storm force winds as it turns post-tropical as it is there moving by. And this is down in the Southwest Caribbean. Uh, you may have noticed I've been talking about that a little bit because the GFS is indicating a system forming there. Right at the start of hurricane season, 1st or 2nd of June, there's a little thing that tries to form there. However, the GFS is the only model calling for this so far. That's why we've not given it any chance of formation just yet. But one or two more confident people might be going with a 10% on that right now. Let's check precipitation over the next seven days here and you can see that it racks up for those areas uh, under those tropical cyclones. Uh, but mostly, uh, most of the precipitation event is finished with the two storms. 
but from Cyclone Ramal over northern Bangladesh and India, we could see some significant accumulations over the next seven days. Very high monsoonal rain amounts over Myanmar once again this week, up to 27 inches, and up in Bangladesh and India, 14 inches there, 350 millimeters, and in other places in the Western Pacific, we could be looking at 12 inches in Iwiniar's track, 300 millimeters. Well, in the longer range, day 5 to 10, there's another system that tries to get going near Taiwan there, moving off towards the east. Don't think it manages it. But then later on, towards the end of the 10-day period, we start to see a real de big development there of storm force winds off the west coast of the Philippines in the South China Sea. And that tries to become a big, another big tropical cyclone, as we saw in the Bay of Bengal. There's quite a similar thing going on there in the South China Sea towards the end of that 10-day period. So uh, looking at the southwest Indian Ocean then, yep, there is that little thing going on and that becomes a tropical cyclone once again on the GFS moving towards that same old location, the Seychelles, as we've seen that now for the third time possibly, if this comes to pass. Uh, we're still, it's still low chances at the moment, uh, but certainly could be a possibility uh, for the southwest Indian Ocean Islands again as we enter the first, near the end of the first week of June. <clears throat> Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. It's still there, I'm still waiting for a Hode t-shirt as well and everyone's begging us to change this sequence because they've seen it for so long now. But we've been waiting for Hone for that long as well. Well, in the silly range then, day 10 to 16, we're looking at this uh, particularly uh, interesting typhoon. Uh, really blowing up into a large storm. Doesn't get particularly strong. Still category 2 probably. And then it shrivels up as it gets close to the coast. Tightens up and uh, reaches land south, uh, to the west of uh, Hong Kong, Macau region. And then it drifts eastwards as it makes landfall there. Uh, so it really wants to visit Hong Kong and then moves off towards Taiwan. Very unlikely and uncertain so far on that, so I wouldn't be losing any sleep over it yet. Well, on this day, May 28th, 2012, it was the first storm that Force 13 actually covered in real time. And that was Tropical Storm Beryl, which made landfall in northern Florida, saw the Jacksonville area there, uh, and nearly got to hurricane status. It was a bit of a surprise at the time. Everyone thought it would just be a fairly weak tropical storm, but it got there in the end, and it nearly reached hurricane status on an interesting track. We had some interesting tracks over there in May in 2012, and then it started to move inland and died off in Georgia. Sandra was dying off as well there in the Western Pacific. Back to today then, the Atlantic, its first name this, this season is the same as in 2012, it's Alberto. In the Eastern Pacific it's Aletta, and in the Central Pacific of course it is still Hone. If you still don't get the Hone joke, well there it is, that's the next storm. We'll be waiting for it for five years. In the Western Pacific the next name now is Malixi, and in the North Indian Ocean it will be Asna. Would be code blue for these systems today. Uh, the code decreased after the storm moved further away from land. In the Australian region, the next name is Robin. Southwest Indian Ocean is still Jeremy. And in the South Pacific, it's Pitta. That's all from today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow. Become an ultimate fan today.